this is Kevin, Cynthia and Steve and we are now at the Tuxleth Chapel in Milan and we have we just come from the you know, main church itself but just to my left and in front we've got a series of graves now all these graves although there are one or two headstones don't get confused by that because there are a large number of unmarked graves, which are all these here, just in front of me, and spreading right across there and across this way. But these, these are on the west end of the church, of the chapel, Tuxleth Chapel, and these are all children's graves. And, and I said, as I mentioned just now, they are all unmarked. But as I said, don't get confused with the ones that are marked because that's not them. But there was an outbreak of what they think was scarlet fever in the early 1940s. But it's still not confirmed. Um, there are different views on this, but this is where all the children's graves are. And as I said, all unmarked, which is very, very sad. Even more here, look. But there has been different theories muted about these graves. But um, again, this was information given to us by Isabella. And she's um, quite knowledgeable of the history of, of Milan Church and the Tuxlith Chapel. So here we have the cha chapel in front of me. Just in this corner on the west end of the chapel are these steps and they go up to what used to be a doorway to a, a mezzanine balcony. But when some old render on the outside and the, uh, and the plaster internally was removed, um, they made some discoveries. And a blocked, blocked up 12th century window was discovered in the late 1990s and that is just here. And we believe that Isabella herself actually made that discovery. Herringbone stonework, again, which is just in front of me. And it was um, using ironstone, which is consistent with the building methods of the late Saxon, early Nor Norman period, between 1066 and 1200. So this is just lovely, lovely stonework. You can see it all the herringbone finish all the way along here. So this is on the south side of the chapel. We're, we're here on a day that is very cold. We've just had a very heavy shower, but the wind is, is biting. It's very, very cold, it's horrible. So I'm continuing round on the uh, the east end of the chapel now. Got these large Douglas fir trees by me, I think. And this is a little porchway to the to the back of the chapel on the east end. So coming round onto the north side of the chapel now, you can see he's got this two rather large buttresses on the on this side. But there was evidence of, an, of a north entrance along with more herringbone work in, in, but inside the vestry. And this is here, just in front of me now. That's that herringbone and there was a, they believe there was an entrance there. But you've got this rather old doorway here with a little leaded like window above. But it's under a tiled roof. And the chapel itself has just got a single bell. Let me just show you here. We're now on the, back onto the west, west end of the church. And that's the single bell. And we've got the buttresses again on this, on, these, on this end. And as I've mentioned before in videos, it's a sign of possible uh, subsidence. So it reinforces the structure of the building. Just in front of me is a lovely little grave. Tr 
treasured memories of Barry Coleman. Uh, 1951 to 57, she was only six. Also in memory of our mother, Bertha Guster, uh, formerly uh, made name of Coleman. So as you can see, there was a, a huge tree here at one point and it's been cut so it can actually be used as like a seat, which is very clever. I'm trying to keep everything as, as dry as I can because it gets spits and spots of rain coming down off the trees. But I'm just going to go into the chapel now. Oh gosh, the, um, there's steps going down to it. But I don't know how this is going to film. So I've come in through the porch and I've got, let me just back away and you've got this really lovely old doorway um, here and this very oh, interesting little handle. But let's just have a look inside to see what we got in here light-wise. It's not too bad. One thing, another thing that Isabella did point out to us, and if I can get the camera up high enough, is just there. It's a, a footprint or a clog print. Let me just see if I can get a better view of that by going up the steps into the pulpit rather wooden, very sort of old wooden uh, pulpit but there there is the the footprint don't know what that was something's just fallen down which was rather unnerving but they very sadly had some damage done to the to the roof here where it came, came in I'm just going to go back down these steps again from the pulpit and you've got the evidence inside of the um, stone of the window where the window was the Saxon window and we've got this um, piscina or oh, is it an ombre? I think it could be an ombre. but as you see it's a very very plain chapel inside Again, you've got the, this is what they were talking about with the, the original doorway coming through there. And you've got the, the brick arch there at the top. And there are some on the stonework here somewhere. I've got to try and find it, but there are some atropaic marks on the, on the stonework. And I can't remember where, but, oh, here they are just there. This is the ones that uh, uh, Isabella were pointing out to us and this is the atropate marks and it's supposed to ward off evil spirits is what I'm told from, by Isabella. Also in the wall you've got this um, what they call scaffold plug holes and timber joist holes. And this is what would have held up the balcony. So you've got one there and you've got another one there. And then you've got some plug holes there. But that's the single bell pull for that bell outside. But this is where the um, mezzanine balcony would have been. And in this corner where the brickwork is, that's the entrance or the blocked up entrance of where the, the door was. So you see, that's where the atropaic marks were, or are on the stonework there. Just here, we've got two pieces of timber, which are fixed to the wall. Now these were, when the chapel was used as a Sunday school, um, this is where the children used to hang their coats and there are pencil names of the children on the plaster work inside the vestry. But we cannot find a vestry, which is rather odd. Um, we've got the tiny little altar here. But 
place they mention a vestry but there's no there is no vestry here and that's the doorway to outside again so that is rather that is rather odd that's right We are trying to be detectives. Well, we know there was a mezzanine balcony up there and we know that there was one here because that is the doorway to it. And the, the, the line that runs all the way along there could possibly be um, a support for it as well. But the, there was another mezzanine balcony here and it was accessed from that doorway, which would have been just there. Oh, Steve's found the vestry. Okay, let's see where. So Steve's going to take us to the vestry. Oh, really? Oh. Ah. Ah, so the vestry was in. Oh, there's a big hole here, and I'll just put my foot straight down it. So this is where the little vestry is. So the vestry is actually outside the main chapel. Um, and as you can see, it's very dark, can't see a thing in it. Um, which is a shame. Yeah, I think in that corner, Steve. Yeah, I think that as Steve said, there's a connecting doorway there from the chapel into here. Um, and if we'd have had, had some lighting, we would have been able to have perhaps seen the, the names of the children. But it's just used as a storeroom now. So that was um, quite interesting. Oh, Cynthia's got a torch. Cynthia's just gone down the same hole. Um, no, is there anything on this wall, sorry, this side? Oh, look. Oh. Oh, something. I don't know whether that's going to pick that up and clearly they've been all the way along the wall there look it's fantastic so yeah there, there it is there look and some names, and some names there naughty children writing on the walls yes yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah brilliant that is fantastic to find that excellent thank that, you perhaps where you used to go it, in into that corner there yeah yeah We're just about to finish now. We've um, had a look round, but also just here, here, and on this side here, and on the wall down here, more atropaic marks, which um, uh, Isabella pointed out to us. So we are now, we've finished here, we've got Steve and Cynthia are down there in the porchway. So I've got, for some reason, my camera's tilted up. That's it, that's better. So this will be Kevin, Cynthia and Steve saying bye-bye. And we'll see you on the next one. We're going to go for a cup of coffee and get warm. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye. Hi, everybody. My name's Lara. If you've enjoyed watching Kevin's video today, then please follow him on social media like this video and subscribe to his channel. Thank you.